Hello, Javas, and welcome to Chunk 1, Module 5, Controlling While Loops with User Input. This is, of course, the second core concept in this week's module, Chunk 1, Module 5, Core Concepts, User Controlled Loops. And here we are. Our goal is to control the number of times the loop ex executed by passing in information to the program as the user instead of hard coding it. Just remember what we mean by hard code. Let's jump back to not a, a simple while. We can see that this number 10 is num loops less than 10. We can't change this 10 without recompiling Java code. Not only that, but we don't really know what this 10 means. In programming speak, this is appropriately referred to as the magic number conundrum. Why did the coder put a 10 there? Is it 10 times because 10 is cool? Is it just a, a round number? Is it uh, demonstrative of something? Or is it very important? There are 10 people to greet at the party, and we must greet all 10. So we want to generally uh, avoid using hard-coded or literal values in our control structures for the while loop. And not only that, but it's fun to include users in that. Let's take a peek at what we're going to code together. I want a program whose specification asks the user how many times to print a loop, and then the loop is shown being run by outputting the value of the counter variable used to accomplish the user's request. And then we also want to give the user a display when execution has continued after the while loop cycles have ended. That's our goal, and let's get to it. I would encourage you, as you are moving through modules, to allocate enough time in your practice that you don't feel like you have to copy and paste because you want to get things done quickly. Just like a language class, we wouldn't say, oh, just because you can say hello, how are you, that we stop greeting each other when you come in the door. Now, part of that's social etiquette, but the other part of it is in a language class, we really value practicing the fundamentals until they are second nature, until they are embedded in our bones. And when they're in our bones, it frees our brain to think about other things. So I'm going to come through here, and I'm actually going to code up the simple while loop that I pulled up here. I'm actually going to put it on my screen so that you can see as I code. I'm going to do a little uh, talk through coding. You can see the some of the tricks that I use when I'm coding and you can see if you can keep up. Otherwise you can pause and make sure that we have the skeleton that we're then going to adjust to build in user input. So there is a hot key, hot keystroke in NetBeans called PSVM for public, void, public static void main. Then I can come here and say int num loops and initialize that to zero. And then we're going to jump into our while statement and we want to say execute the code. Oof, that is in, I'm not typing very well. Typing and talking, very dangerous. While num loops is less than the constant of 10, I would like you to do the following. I'd like you to print the value of num loops is and then print the value of num loops. After I print that value, I'm going to store in num loops whatever num loops was before plus 1. And this is, of course, the close of our while loop. This, I'm looking at my closing and opening curly braces as I'm typing. I can see that the curly brace right after the end of main was highlighted. So this is end of main. I can clean this up, delete rows with control X. And this is end of class. All right, let's verify that this works. It's OK. We have the expected behavior. Oh, we wanted to label when I'm outside the end of our while loop. I wanted to note how quickly I navigate things by using my arrow keys. There are two keys on your keyboard that I bet you have not met very frequently, and that is the home and the end key. These are, of course, relics from the day that we were actually moving a printing carriage down a track across a page. So we'd say go to the home of the line or move the carriage to the end of the line. This is remarkably fast in coding land to be able to open lines and go to the end or beginning of lines. So get in the habit of finding your home and your end key. Hopefully your computer still has them. I think Apple Corporation is not making computers with those keys easily accessible anymore. And then we can move, so move through our code quickly. All right. So the goal here is this number 
the number 10 I want to replace with something that the user inputs. So I need a structure for getting a number from the user and turning it into an int type variable. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to make a variable that's going to say, um, let's see, what did we call it in our, in our tutorial? Let's go look. Um, where are you? There you are. We called it um, loop control. All right, good. So we want uh, loop control. I want to make a variable called loop control. Now I don't need to give it a value. I'm going to init. I'm going to declare it, but not initialize it. So I can even comment that uh, declare, but not initialize, because that's going to happen when I build my scanner. So if I'm commenting my code to give myself a plan, I need to create a scanner object. I know this because I've read my past tutorials and I know that a scanner is an object that knows how to convert keys typed on a keyboard into values stored in a Java variable. So I'm going to create a scanner object and then I'm going to use scanner object to gather integer from user. I'm going to add, I'm going to do my little kind user overture uh, prompt user for a number. Does it have to be an integer? We'll see. That's a good question. Keep that in our minds. All right, I need to code each of these up. And then, um, since I have my loop control here, I'm going to adjust the structure as I go. So I know I've got num loops that marches up from zero. So essentially, I'm creating a container that stores the upper limit. I'm storing the value that's going to trigger num the relationship with num loops to become false. So since num loop starts at zero and goes up once every time the loop is executed, I can think, okay, so if I enter an integer here like 10, it looped 10 times. I'm going to replace that upper threshold with my variable loop control. Now you'll notice that when I hover over this, I get an error that says cannot find symbol. Well, that's because I typed it wrong, but we're still going to get an error. And the error is variable might not have been initialized, which means if nothing happens in between the declaration of loop control and the use of the while loop, when the while loop tries to evaluate its control expression inside the parentheses, it will try to look up loop control to compare it to num loops. When it finds that it only exists as an empty box, it won't be able to do that comparison. So the compiler is not going to let us ship this program out because it knows in advance that line 26 is going to be a doozy. So we need to fill loop control with something. We've got that sitting right here. Let's code up to that point. All right, we're breaking the problem down. I need a scanner object. I can look into uh, previous components of our course and see how that's done. I'm going to explain how it's done, which is we create a variable of type scanner, and we're going to store in it uh, we're going to create a variable name that points to that object. This can be anything we want. So any scanner name. I want to prove to you that how this syntax works. So scanner, or we could say my um, my very own scanner. I'm trying to prove to you that this is just a pointer. It's a sticky note. It's saying the name of this scanner object is my very own scanner. On the right hand side, which is the expression that's going to be generated into some value that's stored in my very own scanner. I must, I repeat, I must provide the assignment system with an expression on the right that is the appropriate type for the expression on the left. Now you'll notice when I type this, if I do an alt enter with my cursor anywhere in that highlighted red keyword, the NetBeans utility gives us a couple of different options for ways that it knows that it could you could correct your problem. Now be careful because these suggestions are coming from various package uh, types in NetBeans. For example, this one JDK Nashorn dot internal part. I don't even know what that is, but there's a chunk of code on here that knows something about scanners, and it said, well, if you import this crazy class, you'll also have an object called scanner. 
Um, we just want the plain run-of-the-mill Java Util Scanner, and so I could hit enter here, and it will add the import statement above the class, but below the package. But I'm going to be mechanical about this, methodical, and I'm going to do it myself. So we're up here in the package. So this is the equivalent of going to a library and checking out a book on user input scanners and you must check out that book before you jump into the class you do that with the import statement and now when I'm down here inside my actual code you'll see that no longer is scanner highlighted in red because the Java compiler knows ah they have imported a book called scanner that's capital S scanner for an object it's pointed to by my very own scanner I made a version of this scanner or I made an instance of this scanner because the new keyword was called and it is stored in a container that can only store scanners and that container is called my very own scanner alright we've got a scanner cooked up let me zoom out for a second and pull in our diagram which was where here so here's our beautiful diagram about scanners I want us to think carefully about what's going on on this line where we made a new scanner this is a diagram from way back in uh, chunk four, excuse me, module four, and we were using a scanner to compute uh, sales price uh, after tax. Inside main, which is where we are working, except our class, of course, is called while with scanner, we create, uh, we, we make the scanner, and then when we call this method dot next double, the method's name is next double, it exists on a scanner object. User input scanner points to a scanner object that we built. When we go into the scanner, we have to use one of the next something something methods. Scanners are built with their own suite of methods, meaning chunks of code that do something if given an input and they can give us certain outputs. The scanner does a bunch of work in the background using older chunks of Java code and those code, uh, that code together knows how to take keys from the keyboard and turn it into a Java compatible type. Alright, so we've made our scanner. Now I need to prompt the user for a number. That is pretty fast. Enter a number of loops to execute. Perfect. And now I have my loop control variable just hanging out. Doesn't have any value, not even zero. I want to write my uh, assignment statement. So I start on the right and I'm going to store it in the thing on the left. Well the thing on the left is going to be loop control because I want the user to be able to fill in the value for loop control. That's the whole goal here is to avoid typing the number 10 right here because it's inflexible. So loop control, I, where am I going to get a value for this container on the left. Well, I have a scanner in memory in the RAM, and I can get that object out with my uh, my identifier, my very own scanner. Okay, my very own scanner has a scanner object inside of it, and I can scroll down and see these next. Hello. Oh, that's Kitty. Um, I can uh, scroll. I can type my dot. So there's dot. You'll notice that as soon as you type the dot operator, it's called the access operator, that NetBeans has pulled up a menu of all the possible methods that you could call on whatever that object is. And we want next int because that is the, the method that knows how to convert typed keys into integer values. You'll also remember from our previous discussion that the scanner object will not let it will not uh, give you a happy output if someone types in something that it cannot convert to an int keys on keyboards are just keys the scanner and the java virtual machine know what the 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 key attached to the number five uh, plastic thing it knows how to convert that into a value in uh, decimal form that can be uh, operated on by java operators i say all of that because this is a complicated set of things going on inside of your computer and we not only should respect the complicated things that we're using for free, it was the um, hard sweat, uh, sweat inducing work of many programmers to get this all to work, but it also means that I may need to study quite a bit to understand some of these lines of Java code. So as of this line, when the compiler hits this line, this is where it's going to stop and it's going to wait 
The program will hang and wait until you have pushed the enter key, which is the clue to the scanner to <laughs> slurp up whatever you typed in, try to turn it into an integer. If successful, the value that was typed in and converted to an integer will be stored in the container on the left-hand side of the equal sign. In our case, it's loop control. So let's imagine that I'm a user. I have a desire to have seven loops and I am now given the chance to type that. So when I hit while loops, I'll say num loops. I'm going to replace in my head whatever that variable's value is at this location in the execution. Num loops, oh, that started at zero. Then I have loop control on the right. That is, oh, well, I just got that. That's going to be seven. The while loop evaluates the expression inside of its parentheses and says is the value of this expression true or false can I reduce down the values and their operators to a true or false value notice if I come in here and I say control uh, I can't say control equals equals six I can't mix and match Java in here it has to be only uh, comparison operators or boolean operators and we'll get to those later so I'm imagining that on that first loop I entered 10, so 0 is less than 10. That means I'll print this through, and then num loops will be incremented by 1. It'll take whatever was in num loops on the right, and it will add 1 and then store it over itself. Okay, interesting. Let's give it a roll. Enter a number of loops to execute. Well, how about 2? Hmm, that's boring. Uh, let's try 50. It can count to 50 pretty well. Let's try, how about 250? That went pretty fast. What about 7, 8, 5, 6, 9, 8? Wow. So you get a sense for how the Java Virtual Machine can show us the richness of the looping process. Computers are very happy looping. Look at how handy it was to building a number that allows us to see tons and tons of numbers go up by one and it'll probably end up doing this for some time because integers can get very large. I can either wait patiently for this to count to the expected terminating value or I can come over here and click the red square. We've just learned how to uh, in integrate a scanner object into a for loop by requesting the user to enter an integer and then using the next int method on the scanner object to read an integer from the keyboard and store it in the container on the left. With that, oh, have fun jobbing!